Hey, what's going on guys, this is Matt. And today we just finished up a brew day and it turns out my final gravity was uh, off by a substantial amount. I did take a pre-boil gravity reading and I did adjust with a pound of dry malt extract, but it appears after taking my original gravity reading after my wort has been in the fermenter and my yeast has been pitched, I am off by still a substantial amount. So I wanted to make a video talking about how you can add dry malt extract directly to a fermenter. And it also helps if you have some sort of uh, glass vial that you can cool the slurry down. If you have a yeast starter uh, flask, this would definitely be the thing you want to use because you can pitch the slurry into this vial and then run it under cold water to cool it down to uh, pitching time. Now you might be asking yourself, why do we need to make a dry malt extract slurry? Why can't we just add the sugar directly to the fermenter? And really there's two main reasons why you'd want to make a slurry. The first is to pasteurize the sugar. The second thing is you want to make sure is that the dry malt extract is mixed properly uh, in the fermenter. And the only way you can guarantee that is by making a slurry and then dumping it into the fermenter. So after taking my original gravity, you want to use a calculator to find out how much dry malt extract to add to the fermenter. You can do this by using an online calculator I have in the description one that you can use, or you can use Beersmith 3 like I am to do this. My measured gravity was 1074 and my target was 1088. Next you want to add your volume. My volume was 3.4 gallons. So as you can tell I need to make a slurry with 1.08 pounds of DME. Next you want to take a scale and measure out your DME. Next, we need to measure out some water. I don't have an exact formula, but I just eyeball it and try to add enough water to properly dissolve the DME without it being too thick. Once the water is at a boil, you want to turn off the direct heat and add the dry malt extract. It's best to stir while adding the DME as this reduces the risk of caramelization. Next, you just want to stir the DME so it's all dissolved before turning the heat back on. Once the DME is fully dissolved, you can turn the heat back up. Just be careful as this will boil over quickly if not watched. Once the DME starts to boil, you want to let this simmer for a few minutes. All equipment used after the boil will need to be sanitized. After the boil, we just need to cool things down before adding this to the fermenter. I think the best way to do this if you have the equipment already is to use a yeast starter flask. Add the DME slurry into the flask and run this under cold water to rapidly cool the wort. Once the liquid is cooled down to around 60 to 80 degrees, you can now add this into the fermenter. That about covers it. Uh, here's the, uh, the slurry uh, that I just finished up. So it's a little bit thicker as you can tell. Uh, but it's not too thick. Uh, if it's too thick, then uh, you, you can risk caramelization. Um, and also it's a little harder to work with and cool off. But once it's cooled off to around pitching temp, then you can just pitch this directly into the fermenter. Uh, one last thing I want to mention too, um, make sure that everything that is touching this slurry is sanitized. Um, if you're using unclean um, anything or unsanitized anything, you can risk contamination for your entire batch. So make sure everything is sanitary and clean. But that about covers it guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.